What's going on everybody and welcome back to the Half-Ass Garage. I appreciate you coming to hang out with me in the shop where today we've got the Cherokee back in here. So in case you didn't see the last episode where we finally did the front axle conversion to make it four-wheel drive, um, it had some issues towards the end. So I suspect it's the transfer case because that's the only thing that really hasn't been tested on this truck or driven around um, and there's never been a load on the transfer case since I got it. If you're not familiar with the Cherokee or you're new to the channel, um, I'll give you some history on it and you can go back and watch the other videos on what it was like when I got it and all the process of getting it to where it is now. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit you know like on the videos if you want, but the gentleman that I got this from is no longer with us. So. I got this as part of an estate. I bought it from, you know, his wife, and I, she knew nothing about it. I know nothing about it. I bought it. It was heap full of parts. I got engines and transmissions on pallets. It was pretty messed up. So I know nothing at all about the Jeep, and I'm just learning about it as we go through it. So it was a two-wheel drive Jeep. He was going to make it into a trail truck, so I'm kind of continuing along with what his original plan was. But... We put a new engine in it because the engine it came with was blown, or a different engine. A four-wheel drive transmission and transfer case, you know, because it's not two-wheel drive anymore. And last episode, we put the front axle in it to make it for, uh, four-wheel drive. But that's where we're at right now. It had its maiden voyage, and there's some racket coming from what I suspect is a transfer case because it's the only thing that hasn't really been driven on in this thing. So... The front axle, I think, is good, and I think the transfer case chain is just loose. But we're going to check right now to see if there's any fluid in the transfer case. If there's not, well, we're going to fill it up and see if that changes anything. Probably not. Oh, by the way, there's Mortsky Repair. So if you haven't checked out his channel, you should. So he's cool, dude. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to check to see if there's any fluid in this thing. If there's not, we're going to fill it up. If not, we're going to maybe stick the bore scope down in there and see if that chain is just hanging down. So if the chain's hanging, then the transfer case is kind of shot. Um, I do have that other one that's untested. We'll try to put that one in. But I really haven't ever worked on transfer cases before. So we're kind of learning. I'm learning as I'm filming this for you guys. So we're just going to have to see how it goes and, and what things look like. So let's go check out that fluid and see how it looks. All right, well, I had to go up to the store and buy a 30 millimeter socket because these are 30 millimeter. Now, if my cursed light will stay up without falling down, this thing, I swear, is cursed. It's all, it always is in the way. Like, the hooks will grab you as you're trying to walk by. It's legitimately cursed. So... Here's the drain plug. It looks a little bit dry, but I haven't... Ooh, there's nothing in here. Let's try the bottom one. I don't have you up on a stand because there's no room. I don't have the Jeep jacked up. So you're just going to have to roll with me for a minute. Oh, man. Sorry about that. Whoa, that's tight. I got this nut broke loose. These things are like 50,000 foot-pounds. But I don't know if there's going to be anything that's going to come out of here uh, or not. It doesn't feel like there's really anything in the transfer case. So I don't see anything really running out of it. Oh, there is some fluid in it. You can see it here. It's black as night. It's supposed to be just ATF. But uh, feel up in here, there's nothing. So it's way down. Well, it's a new day today. A little bit uh, windy out, so I can't do much outside. Um, thinking about this XJ and kind of what it was doing, uh, I couldn't get the 
uh, bore scope down inside to see anything meaningful. It was just nothing. So there's must there must not be enough room in there for for that focal range or whatever to work. So anyway, um, you saw that it was out of fluid. I'm just going to just uh, go ahead and stick this in it. Now I bought some of the ATF Plus 4 that I was told is what this is supposed to take. Um, but I don't know if that pump is shot in the uh, transfer case or not. I really don't have any idea what it's like in there. Um, it looked pretty clean, but some of the fluid coming out you saw was, was just black and nasty. So I don't want to use that 750 a quart fluid, and it's like $200 to, to, for the rebuild kit for this. So what I'm going to do instead is just uh, fill it with whatever I've got of the regular ATF. It's not going to get really driven much, and I want to see if it'll stop that, that knocking, which I don't think it will, but uh, it's just peace of mind. So we'll go ahead and pump that full and uh, back it out. I don't have room or time right now to do a transfer case swap. I've got other things to do. So the XJ might have to take a back seat for a little bit. All right, well, I bought these pumps. Um, check it out, old school from the Beetle. I bought these pumps at the store. This one was a little bit more expensive. But this one is supposed to work on the quart size jars. And I've done the whole like upside down under the truck, car, whatever, pouring the thing in and having it all run down your arm in the past throughout my life. And uh, I'm kind of over it. So we're going to try this and see how it works. Seems pretty straightforward. This pump fits down on there like yeah. And then uh, you have these different length tubes. So this one would be oops the length apparently for one of these so there we go fits down in pump 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 it up go right on in there all right well if you can hear the wind out there I can't do anything about that I'm gonna try to drain out what's left in here and just kind of see what it looks like um, oops. Well, I mean, it's kind of red. Reddish. I uh, can't really tell if it's like gritty or not. It doesn't feel too bad. So, it, it doesn't look like it was leaking. You know, it's not like the seals are blown out of it. Um, up here, you can. Oh, I think I put that rear seal in. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'll let this drain for a minute, then we'll pump it full of fluid. All right, well, I looked at a kind of a breakdown of what these things are like inside, and it doesn't seem like there's really anything that could cause the problems that we're experiencing other than it's just trashed. So I think that the, the chain is slipping on the little you know sprockets or cogs or gears or whatever you want to call them in there and that's what's given us that rattling there is a pump inside but I think that that only lubricates the bearings and whatnot so I don't believe or I didn't see anything that looked like you know the fluid would, would pump up into something that would expand or take up slack or anything like that so what we're going to do is try this, try the pump. There we go. So if there's anybody out there that knows anything about these, feel free to comment down below. <clears throat> Let me know what the, you know, what the issues are when they go bad and how they act. Because I, I don't know, I've never had a transfer case ever go out on me. It's not getting all of it out of this jug. Oops. Yeah, I've got about, what is that, milliliters down there? It, it leaves about 200 milliliters in the bottom. Let's try to see if we can feel any fluid in it. Oh yeah, we got some. 
it's probably up to like there. Yeah, so I tried to get smart and uh, use a funnel to get up in there. Pour in the last little bit. Not so much. So that's how much fluid roughly uh, that little su sucker deal leaves in the bottom. So all down my arm still. I sopped up most of it. And hey, check it out. Right? I said I was going to get it. Retire Old Faithful. Alright. I'm not excited about it or optimistic about it, but we're going to hop in the old XJ here. Take it out in the nasty wind. It's like 30 mile an hour winds. I don't know if I said that or not, so I don't know how the audio is going to come out. But together... Oh man, the battery's dead. Let me jump it. Alright, well she's running. I don't know if you ever got a chance to see this awesome headliner and stuff. So there you go. Quality XJ headliner. We'll give it a shot. See how this thing works. What doesn't make sense is before I put the front axle in and the drive shaft, this thing was driving around no problem. Now we have like these weird noises. No, oh, maybe. All right. So that was just some weird rumble. All right, let's try it in four wheel drive and see what's up. All right. Want to do four high? I don't have any four wheel drive indicators on this, so. A little brake torque action. joints are okay. It's turning. Yep, I can feel it binding in the front, so I don't have any problems with the U-joints. Man, this is a nightmare mess. Alright, let's try it in four low. It seems like that might have solved our issue a little bit. Interesting. I guess let's. Oh no. Down. Down. Okay, that one works. No, go up. This one did work. Shit. All right. Hey, hey, let's put it in reverse. I think we fixed it. Oh my God, we fixed the XJ. Maybe we didn't. Oh no, that, oh, oops. XJ's repaired. Oh, my window isn't all the way up yet. There we go. Oh, is it working yet? Sort of. Was it? Could it be that simple? Could it be that easy? Could it have just been fluid? I wonder what that is. That sounds like it's in the front now. to come up here, throw in reverse, oops, let me put it in four high, or see if we can kick a little bit of mud, oh yeah, four wheel drive's working alright, oh yeah, so four wheel drive works. Hell yeah. 
Now it's time. Oh, I, I think I might have blown the tire. Maybe not. Oops, can't go there. Oh, on the edge. Get it. Oh. I'm saying it's a win. Four-wheel drive is 100%. I think we fixed the XJ. Yeah, look at the carnage. We've got some rattling around in there. I don't know what that is. She, she, <laughs> she, could, she could use a little bit of work, but otherwise... It's our head. I wonder if the battery is falling out. Four wheel drive works great. Let's see if we have any tires left. Oh, as the Jeep should be. <laughs> there we go. Um, some weird, some weird smell. It ain't too bad. I'll have to go over it, go over with the tractor and kind of smooth that out a little bit because it'll be a nightmare cutting it, cutting the grass. Hey, it's a win. Um, I'm glad that I don't have to work on it a lot right now because it's covered in friggin' sloppy mud. But hey, it's working. Nice. XJ rides again. So that was it. Some fluid. I mean, I don't think it's right, but it isn't making the same racket that it did before. So that's a win. Today, I'm just going to call it. I'm going to spray the XJ off the best that I can. We have four wheel drive in the XJ. The rest is just coasting. We're gonna put a lift kit on it, some better tires, just odds and ends, nothing super crazy and huge. We're just gonna make it a nice truck, so stay tuned for the XJ stuff. But other than that, we're winning. So, the XJ. working fine now there's still some clunks in here and you know whatever but that could be just my um my exhaust that's just kind of stuck on the end of the pipe with a clamp on it who knows there's it could be anything but four-wheel drive works i guess a fluid change is all that it needed i don't know i'm sure it's not fixed you know but it seems to work okay and the more i was kind of whipping on it the better it got so I, I guess it's just stuck, you know, it's just, it's kind of just all tight from, from just sitting for God knows how many years. It's out here now, just chunks of mud just dripping off of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, I sprayed it down a little bit. I'm pretty happy with it. I can't complain. Four-wheel drive works on the Cherokee. Thank God, because... Oh man, I really was not looking forward to uh, doing any kind of transfer case work on it. And uh, the rest of the Jeep Cherokee content will come later this summer when maybe we do a lift kit and actual real exhaust and finish the interior and things like that. For right now, it works. It drives around. I've got my murder mystery thing here on the ground, but it just drives and it works. And that is all I care about right now. 
So thanks a lot for watching the half ass Garage and hanging out with me. If you like the stuff, you know, hit like, subscribe to the channel. It'll help us out. And if you want to see more XJ stuff on the channel, just let me know and I'll fit it in where I can. I don't know if anybody's super interested in watching me revive an old XJ, but uh, this is it. Anyway, we'll put a lift kit on it soon, get some tires, get some wheels, get whatever, finish the interior, all that stuff at a later time during the summer. Let's focus on the D150, let's focus on the Rusty Ram and some of the other projects, and then we'll just see what we can pick up over the summer. Thanks a lot. Catch you next time.